Hello everyone and welcome to the Apple debugging series. My goal for this series is to dive into the tools that are available to all Apple developers to diagnose and debug the issues that they might come across. So maybe your application is performing slower than you expect, or maybe your view is just positioned in the wrong location and you don't quite know why. Or perhaps your application is leaking memory, or you're just showing a value that you don't expect. Well, this series on debugging will show you various tools that you have in your toolkit to address the problems that you might face. So let's just go ahead and get started. And being the very first tutorial in the series, uh, we're going to start with printing. Now we're going to make a new project here. And generally speaking, I'm going to pick Mac OS, uh, but that's just kind of a personal preference. It really doesn't matter. We just need some kind of command line tool for this tutorial because we're doing some fairly simple things. So I'm going to pick Mac OS command line tool here. I'm just going to call it lesson one. And we're going to be working in Swift as our language for pretty much all of these uh, tutorials. And now uh, I'm going to save that. And here we go. So if I head over to our main.swift file, we can see that the very first program we get is one that prints something. So obviously the basics of printing, you pass a string into the print statement and you know you print out whatever the string is in the console. Not going to explain that too much, but what we're trying to dive into today is sort of the um, what actually gets done when we try to print, say, an object, right? What is the print statement actually trying to do when it prints things out? And we'll talk a little bit about uh, debugging with print statements as well. So let's just start this off with a class. So I'm going to make bar, and we're going to make that a subclass of NS object, which uh, of course comes from foundation. And then we're going to make a standard Swift class, and we're just going to call it foo. Then let's make two different objects here. So we're going to make one bar, one foo. And obviously bar and foo don't mean anything, but they're kind of just, you know, programmer parlance for uh, I don't actually have a good object name. <laughs> um, all right, so now let's print these guys out. So there's two different versions of print that we can do here. Uh, one of them is just standard print. And the other is debug print. And we can just pass the same things along. So I'm going to print out foo. I'm going to debug print foo. And if I run this, we can see that the implementations of both are actually the same. But what actually gets printed out is different. Now the reason for this is that NS object already implements a version of description for itself. So the version it implements is this top one up here where we have basically the class name, which is the module plus the class. And then we have just the address in which it's located in memory. Then the uh, Swift only class, which is what foo is here, uh, doesn't quite have the same printout. Uh, and I think that it might just be the print statement doing that for generic uh, Swift classes, that it's basically just tacking on the module name and the class name uh, to any Swift class object. All right, so with that said, what are the differences between uh, these calls? Well, let's first talk about how we can change what's printed out here. So uh, one of the methods is description. So I'm just going to implement description here. And notice that we're actually overriding it because NS object already has an implementation of it. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to return our uh, bar description like so. And if I run this, we can see that my output is actually bar description and bar description. So the difference between print and debug print isn't actually any different. And that's because NS object actually just will always just print the standard description, essentially, it doesn't have a different implementation for debug description. If however, I override that method, so I will return a different we'll call this debug bar description, or maybe to be consistent, we'll do bar debug description. And as we can see here, we get actually that different printout when we use the debug print. So the debug print will tr attempt to print the debug description. 
And if there's nothing that's there, it will fall back to the description case. Okay, so this is all good, um, but what about our standard Swift class here, which doesn't inherit from NS object? Well, where these two methods come from are actually from Swift protocols. So there's two different protocols that you want to know about. One of them is the custom string convertible protocol. And if we go into this, so we can command click, or at least I have it set up to command click to, to jump to definition, but um, so we want to jump to the definition of custom string convertible. And we can see here that there is one, uh, one uh, property that we need to implement, which is the description computer property. And so that's what we want to do. So to conform to custom string convertible, we implement description and we return, we'll just say foo description, like so. And now if I build and run, we can see that we'll actually get foo description for both of these cases. Great. Now, uh, how do we get the debug one? Well, the debug one is just a different protocol. It's a custom debug string convertible. And we just implement the debug description. And same as this protocol, it really just has this one uh, computed property that we need to implement and we can return foo debug description like that and you can see that we will now get the different output uh, for this printout great all right so uh, let me just actually switch that to that side so what we want to do here now is uh, what are the differences between description and debug description. Why might we want uh, these various ways? Well, for starters, when we actually set a breakpoint, the breakpoint is going to fall back or it's actually going to start with the debug description implementation. Now, I know I haven't talked about breakpoints, uh, but that will come in a future series. I'm not going to do anything other than tell you that a breakpoint will stop your code execution if you put one down. So what I'm going to do is just click on the sidebar here in Xcode and that will put me uh, right here, this will create a breakpoint for me. And if I run the application, we can see that I'm actually gonna stop at this point and I can use LDB. Again, something we'll talk about in a different tutorial, but the point that I'm trying to make here is that if I want to actually print out the object, normally you'll just get the standard description. But if you implement debug description, it's important to know that I can actually print out foo. So I'll just PO foo. And you'll notice that we actually get the debug description implementation. So it's just a, kind of a nice way of separating out. Maybe you have a simpler description that you want for your object. And maybe the debug description would be a very complex sort of, you know, throw all the information out that you might want to use to determine what's in this, this uh, object. So let's make our debug description a little more uh, complicated here. So uh, let me just get rid of this breakpoint so not to confuse anybody. So let's make a uh, debug description a little more complicated. And to do this, uh, and just to continue your breakpoint, you can hit the little button that I just hit there to, to continue it, or you can just stop, uh, stop the program. So let's make our debug description slightly more complicated. I'm just gonna delete it. And I have this sort of pre-made method here that I'm just gonna walk you through. Now it's pretty simple. We're just getting the class name, which we can use in Swift by saying type of self. And then there's kind of this mangled way of getting the address of, um, of your object. So this will print out the uh, object address. And we saw this in the very beginning of this tutorial when we were actually subclassing NS object and not overriding anything. Uh, that's actually what NS object will do as well. So if we go ahead and run this, we'll see that our debug description will actually be class name plus the address location which this object resides, which is pretty great. That's uh, kind of what we want when we're, when we're debugging things. Now, we could make this even more advanced, um, and we could say that maybe we want all objects to, that, that conform to custom debug string convertible to actually print out a description. So just for the sake of argument, let's say that I remove this call right here, and I'm going to use um, another little code snippet that I have here. And again, I'll explain what's here. But uh, so we have foo, and we are conforming to custom debug string convertible. 
And what we're actually doing is we're creating a protocol extension here to make the, the default case for anything that conforms to custom debug string convertible. So even though foo itself doesn't implement debug description, that's okay because we have a fallback case for anything that conforms to the custom debug string convertible. And uh, what we have here is uh, really the same. So this code here is the same that we were doing here where we take the class name and the address of the object and we put that in the description. And then there is sort of a way in Swift that we can, um, so it's called mirror where you basically just can inspect the different uh, properties on a given object. So you can get the property name and the value of the property and I could print those out. So let's just say that I want to add a few properties to foo. So we'll do name and may as well throw me in there. And age, I guess I'm getting older from the last time I was doing these tutorials. But uh, so yeah, that's what we have here. I'm just going to add these two properties. So one's a string, one's an integer. And then, uh, so yeah, that's really what we're, we're going to do here is that the default implementation for anything that conforms to custom debug string convertible will be this implementation here, which prints out class name plus address plus the property names and their values. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. So here is our new, uh, oops, didn't want to do that, our new description of foo, right? We have our class name and address as you expected, but then we actually also print out the properties and their values associated with the object. So it's kind of an interesting way to, to fall back on um, a case that you might want to print out any object. I'm not sure that I'm really a fan of having an extension for every object uh, that I might ever encounter, but it's just an interesting thing to think about. And um, if you you know don't want to have an extension for it, you could just put it in the class that you have. Now, uh, one last thing is that of course, if I uh, will implement this in the class here, so if I actually have my own implementation of debug description in foo, then it's going to override the case that I have. So now we're back to our original implementation there. All right, so that's pretty much all I wanted to really talk about for printing in this tutorial. The general ideas are that if you want to implement your own uh, printable objects, you want to override either, well, either override description and debug description if it's a subclass of something from foundation, or if it's a purely Swift class, you want to conform to the custom string convertible or the custom debug string convertible. And these two options give you a little bit of flexibility on how you want to print out your objects for debugging purposes. Anyway, I hope this tutorial was beneficial to you. If you have any suggestions for future uh, videos that you want to see, maybe you're running into your own problems and uh, you'd like to see me kind of tackle that, feel free to leave your suggestions of uh, things you'd like to learn in the comments below. And I'll see you guys all next week.